So Power Queen offered to send me a 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery. And I've had a few of those already. So I thought, well, what about two 12 volt, 50 amp hour batteries? They sent these and I'm gonna be honest, these have actually come in handy really well. You've already seen them on the channel. I use them as a impromptu power source for my electrolysis to clean up that little piece of metal that I found on the creek. And I've also realized, you know what, this is the perfect size to keep a battery pack in our car because I have a few tools that I like to keep with us on road trips and stuff and a little air compressor and stuff. And this is perfect. Now, what I say is we swap out this connector for the one that I have that has a um, amp meter on it. And we run our air conditioner off this and we see how much do we get? We'll divide the whole thing by half. Or maybe I should just go ahead and unsync it. You know what? We'll do that. We won't have it together. But I had this together to charge. I took this to the workshop, had it on the solar panels, and they had like three days to balance charge. So that should be enough. So I ended up going with the one battery connection. We have this one going through the amp connection and we can fully drain this battery because I have this little six amp hour battery connected up. And right now it's just running the fan on here. Let's connect up the air conditioner and let it run. It's not a particularly hot day today. It's gonna be like 86 degrees, but we've been having this weird issue where our neighbors got evicted and they had a horrible apartment. The construction guys have been throwing all their garbage out the, the back window and into the sidewalk. Cockroaches are just erupting from their apartment and running across our windows. So we are not opening our windows because we have a bug-free apartment. And I take that stuff very seriously. So it is air conditioner all the way for this next month or so. And so that means this will be a fairly low load. The current time is 11.18 in the morning. been an hour and 10 minutes. This is always wrong. Pulling quite a bit. It is actually a bit of a warm part of the day already. But it is cooling the whole apartment. 33 amp hours, 432 watt hours. It's rated for 640. We might reach two hours on one of these but it's a bit of a warm day. Not as hot as it has been. It's not scorching hot, but it is warm. So sometimes on a slightly warm day, I can have it on low and it'll turn on and off and on and off. But right now it's just saying on low. So yeah. It's now been an hour and a half. Let's see, voltage is dipping. 41 amp hours. A little bit warm, that's to be expected. I wonder how much we'll get out of this. The watt hours is what's important. So with testing these batteries, it's best not to focus on the amp hours because the amp hour it's a good measurement for roughly telling how much power there is there, but it's more, it more favors the size of the battery, but the electrical needs, well, watt hours seems to be a little bit better. And you know, a 50 amp hour tells you a little bit more on the electrical side about how many amps it can provide at any given moment. But the 640 watt hours, that's what we'll focus on in this 
because you know I've had a few 200 amp hour batteries that they end up being more watt hours than they recommend but less amp hours because the amp hours changes for instance when the battery is fully charged it pulls more watt hours for the same amps and when it's discharged the voltage is lower so it pulls less watt hours with the same amps it's similar to how with capacitors you have the farads, the farads, or whatever, like microfarads and stuff like that. S similar, well, not as bad as farads, but um, similar issues, or limitations, I guess you could say. 546 watt hours. I would say, since this is getting a little bit warm, we could probably count it as having wasted like 20 yeah like like 20 watt hours just in warming the wires oh wow i'm glad i came in here because you know after just an hour and a half that was at the point which it was starting to drain this should start beeping pretty soon and i even just turned it up to 77 and it's quite a hot day Turn it up to 78. Okay. I turned it to fan. And let's let go of the rest of just doing the fan. I put the fan up to high. Taking 62 watts, the voltage went up to 11.4 volts, and so now it's going down. Let's see if I can go to eco mode. Oh, it shut off. Okay. That was the last bit. So 43 amp hours, 562 watt hours. I probably could have gone longer with just having it on the fan though. So it seems like we were able to get, let's say 45 amp hours or let's see 590 watt hours while pulling a fair amount of power now let's use the inverter which the inverter uses only four watts of power at idle and let's use this one to power something much slower like maybe 100 watts or something around there it's best for me to run this thing down and out of power because this thing very often loses its mind and it doesn't like working with the, the remote control and uh, it goes up to like 80 degrees randomly. It, it just happens to be whenever we, we leave it plugged in for over a, a month or so, something in there, some firmware bug rolls over. I just connect, disconnected the external power and it is still giving power. So you know what? Let's move this setup to the living room and have it running the, uh, the TV. How about that? had to kind of move over all my laptop shenanigans and we still have a little bit of power left in this and the meter's still running so so we have the light we have a few of the little things down here laptop charger oh come on There we go. See, this is why I miss old televisions. Like this one. Because this one, you plug it in, you can turn on instantly. Okay. So it's taking 70 watts of power. 
And where are we at? Let's see. Five hundred sixty-four watt hours. Okay, let's see how much more we can eke out of this. So this tells me you can only take um, a high amount of power to a certain point, of course. But if you were to do a small amount of power, you would probably get this the full amount. We can test that with the other battery. But with this one, I'm curious to see where they differentiate because let's say we use 90% of the power while pulling quite a bit of power. And this is a little bit warm. Not warm, warm, but it's, it's not as warm as this. But it, it, it obviously has been working harder to give almost like 0.6 C. C being the relative amps per, uh, relative to amp hour. See, that's one reason why amp hour is useful is because like a 50 amp hour battery for lithium iron phosphate, usually you don't want to go over 50 amps, one amp per amp hour. With lead acid, you can pull more, but again, it's a different chemistry. And with this one, if this differs from the other one, well, we can tell that that 90 or so percent that we used a lot more power quickly, if that took more power or took more, that may have been running less efficiently. And so we can see how well this handles with high power versus low power. Like for instance, the wires warming up and maybe on the inside, maybe some of the tabs were warming up and maybe there's inefficiencies in the cells. You're always gonna have a bit of an inefficiency increase whenever you pull more power. And um, it's not like it's a detriment or anything, but it would just be interesting, we can now probe we can get a good idea since these were balanced together and they're basically the same battery. And the build quality seems really good quality on these. So I presume they can be, we can consider them fairly similar. We'll be able to get a good idea from how much more we get out of this, how much running it with high load compares to running that same amount of time over longer duration. Okay, look at that, we're getting, starting to beep. Yeah, so not much more power, I guess. Forty-three point eight amp hours, five hundred sixty-seven watt hours. So only like eight more watt hours. Okay, we will remember those numbers. So we got like seven more watt hours out of that. Not very much. And let's see if I remove this battery. Oh, it's still going, okay. You know what, that handled that really well because my other batteries I've tested, they, even after sitting for a week, it took them several weeks to balance charge. Since this battery didn't cut off at like 11 and a half volts, that tells me that these cells are pretty balanced. Before I connect this up, I just want to mention that it is at 13.6 volts. This is the fully charged battery. Now let it's, let's, let's let it run the entertainment system. This only takes like maybe 70 watts. And also this has been sitting out for two days now. So, you know, sometimes whenever you take a battery directly off the charger, there's almost like a residual charge left on them. Well, we won't be running into that issue with this. So this will be representative of what's actually in the battery. You know, cause whenever you take a battery freshly off the charger, it seems like there's some power that gets lost or um, you can do this with nickel metal hydride batteries or nickel cadmium, for instance, where you just kind of put them on the charger, pull them back off, and they have a lot of power for a few seconds. Even dead batteries, but since it's been 48 hours, that helps a lot with the, the realisticness of this. So this will probably be about the same if we were gonna be letting it sit for a week or a month.
Gonna give me time to film my other videos. It's been six hours and I decided to start running my PC off of it too. We're watching some videos and we got some pretty good usage so far. Otherwise it'd be like midnight by the time it finishes. Finished a uh, azonometry video about semiconductors, and look at that, 673 watt hours, and it's 10.64 volts. That's getting pretty low. Oh, it's going down in real time, actually. It's about 49 amp hours. That's pretty good. Call it there. So we have 49 amp hours and 674 watt hours, 675. That's pretty good. That's performing better than the label says. Well guys, that is, I'd say, an A-grade cell, an A-grade battery. As for the structural, like the build quality of them, nice thick plastic. Now this, this is the same um, type of battery as other brands, and so not much surprise there, but it's, this is one of the good brands. I like that the base has these little dimples on the bottom that makes them not slip around so much. Well, that's pretty much that. Quick little video. They wanted a video up pretty quick, so I figured, hey, I'll make my video. I've used it for a good number of things, done a few tests, and yeah, the quality has turned out pretty good. So, it seems like as, as long as you get a good price on it, you can't go wrong with these batteries. And now, we have one last thing we're going to do with this, but I'm not going to film it. This is going to be something that you might see in a future video. One of these batteries, I'm going to charge up to 50%, and I'm going to put it in the back of our car. So we'll always have a 12 volt source of power to charge our, uh, to run our air compressor and our inverter and things like that. And if we need to ever top up the battery for anything, um, I mean, th this wouldn't be able to start a car, but it could possibly top off, top off a dying battery. So I think this tiny size for this battery is a pretty good and, and fairly light too, would be good as a, um, everyday carry in an automobile. Well, that's pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. See ya.